dancing in the moon. I ever find it. I can't hit that high note anymore. <laughs> you are on Cayuga Lake, one of the Finger Lakes, and it's 40 miles long, and it's uh, very deep, four or 500 feet deep. We get it almost every night. When that moon gets big and bright, it's supernatural delight. Every border was dancing in the moonlight. I think it's it's always just been a joyful, relaxed uh, celebration of life. I think it's always been uh, uh, a very easygoing and uh, peaceful and pleasant song. Everybody here is out of sight. But they don't bark and they don't bite. They keep things loose. They keep things alive. Every border was dancing in the It's a happy song, but the reason why you wrote it wasn't happy at all. Well, no. A bunch of friends and I were running a nightclub in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. And we decided one day to take a schooner from St. Thomas to St. Croix. And my girlfriend and I got very sick going across to St. Croix. And when we got there, I was glad to get on shore and my friends were fine. They went back out on the boat to spend the night, and Adrian and I said, no, no, we're not going out there. We see the boat out in the harbor, you know. No, no, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. But I had forgotten to bring my wallet. I was just out of it. And uh, my girlfriend said, why don't we just camp out on the beach here? So we did. We fell asleep on the beach under a full moon, and, uh, and that's all I remember clearly. Mm -hmm. I remember being hit really hard, and five guys were attacking us with baseball bats. So uh, I just remember getting hit again and again and then losing consciousness. Um, I found out later from Adrian that the leader raped her and the rest were in line to rape her. Um, and they put a towel over her head and every time she would make a noise, they'd slap her. And um, she thought she was going to be raped by the rest of them and maybe killed. And then she said there was this horrible animal noise, this howling. And apparently I uh, saw fit to recover consciousness and attack them. I don't know how I could have. I had one arm dislocated and ribs broken, my face all fractured. And, but uh, I think I made enough noise to scare them off, uh, which probably saved our lives. I lost consciousness again, and uh, <clears throat> I woke up in the hospital later, and I, I remember the doctors were talking, and they said, well, is he going to make it? And uh, one of the other doctors said, I don't know. And I realized they were talking about me, and it really made me mad. I thought, yeah, I'm going to make it, you know. Anyway, so long story short, I had to re-break all these fractures in my face and then have them reset. And then I had a long recovery period where I was really, I had a big nuclear headache. Adrian was okay. She's a real survivor, real tough. She was great, but I had a pretty bad headache for a while. I couldn't play in a band, it was too much, but I did, uh, I was writing some verse, and I took one of the verses uh, that I wrote and sat at the piano having had a glass or two of wine and wrote Dancing in the Moonlight. We like our phone and we never fight. And stay up tight at supernatural delight. Every border was dancing in the moonlight. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody feeling a warm and bright. It's such a bright and natural sight. Everybody dancing in the moonlight. And in it, I was just trying to envision a world that was a lot better than the one I had experienced. You know, one in which people were getting along. People weren't fighting. People weren't uh, violent. I was 
felt that I was rewarded for taking this horrible bummer and getting it up onto higher ground and, uh, you know, celebrating the positive. And I think that speaks to people. I think the universe enjoyed my response. <laughs> and I've certainly enjoyed the universe's response. And that's the same.